Um, the gremlins got into the IT system, I'm afraid, but we're here now and everything's fine. So, um, do we, do we have, have any other interruptions? No apologies for seeing this morning, Chair. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest in items on the agenda? Um, minutes of the last meeting to confirm the minutes of decisions made at the meeting held on the 16th of April. Um, we all had them. Do I have a proposal? Thank you, uh, Councillor Anderson and Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I'll take that as a second. All those in favour? That's you, Namaste. Thank you very much. I have heard of no items raised by Ms. Scrutiny. You... I'm received, Chair. Thank you. Right, so, right, we, so move we move on, on then to, to item, item six, six financial, financial outturn report. Um, we, we are uh, being asked to note the outturn position, consider the outturn position, approve the recommended reserve amendments as in section 3.5.5, note the position at the end of the year. Treasury Management Report. The, the details, details of those recommendations, recommendations are all in paragraph 1.2, number 1.21 to 1.24. Um, can I have a proposal and seconder so that we can go into debate, please? Uh, Councillor Johnson proposed, Councillor Anderson seconded, thank you. And are we all in agreement? We can, oh no, we're not voting on recommendations, we just want to propose. <laughs> Preempting everything. Um, sorry. Councillor Johnson, would you like to open the um, debate, please? Thanks, Chair. Um, this report provides the outturn position for 23 24, um, but it's subject to any changes that may be needed as part of the finalisation of the statement of accounts and subsequent audit. Um, it is effectively the end of year accounts. For the, for the Council for 2023-24. And it's important to remember it's a historical document which reflects the position as at the end of March, as far as possible, uh, and um, should be read um, with that in mind. Uh, as has been said, the recommendations are paragraph 1.2. I won't read them out in detail as they've already been read. Um, the key area is to note in the report are as follows. The outer position shows an overall forecast of underspend of 0.6 million compared to budget, which largely relates to better investment income receipts of 1.4 million against the budget, but is offset by the deficit position on the dedicated schools grant of 1.6 million. Section 3.5 and Appendix A shows the position in greater detail. The table at 2.2 provides an overview of the financial performance. Our, pro our proactive approach to financial management through the year by senior management has meant that 0.7 million of savings planned for future years have been achieved early during 2023-24, alongside 1.2 million of one-off savings and 1.9 million of additional income. These include holding vacancies pending future redesign of service delivery, planning application income and interest receipts income and more effective use of grant income most significant of, of those is the interest receipts. However, these savings have been offset by 3.1 million of other pressures or adverse variances that have materialised during the year, such as expenditure on the high needs block uh, of 1.6 million, uh, home to school transport of 0.8 million, road maintenance of 0.2 million, increasing supplier costs and complexity of care with adult social services of 0.2 million, and the cost of ensuring the safeguarding of children through the necessary use of more expensive high cost care placements and agency staffing, which cost 0.2 million. The, the high needs block, which is the most significant of these, uh, is covered later on pages 19 to 20 of, of the papers. This report provides an update on recommended reserve balances, incorporating the underspend position of 0.7 million to mitigate risks and provide the ability to invest in our future for financial sustainability. I guess difficult to say. Our approach is to protect the Council against an increasing risk profile. 
This has resulted in an additional 1.2 million transferring to the risk reserve. The most in significant increase in risk recognised is from the outturn position on the dedicated schools grant funding, where demand and resulting expenditure is outstripping the funding available. This is exacerbated by the current position in the adult care market, where the recent closure of homes in the last 18 months, particularly in the last quarter of 2023-24, is causing us concern. The updated position against the financial sustainability investment agreed within the finance update report at 30th September 23 shows that 70% of spend has been spent or committed to date. The positive impact of some of this spend is already being experienced, such as the equipment in the council chamber which provides better audio and visual quality. We hope this enhances the democratic process and provides transparency within Rutland to the benefit of the council's reputation. The level of st strategic risk has remained high throughout 2023-24, particularly regarding the Council's ability to recruit and retain staff members. The Council has benefited financially from being able to deliver MTFS savings, medium-term financial strategy savings, early by holding vacancies. However, we are mindful of the level of turnover, placing undue burdens on the remaining staff members. The Council is making positive steps to reduce this risk through additional investment in staff related initiatives and the development of a revised workforce strategy. We are planning to update the built environment and the tools provided to staff to allow them to operate efficiently and effectively in a modern working environment. In summary, the 2023-24 <coughs> financial performance contributes to the overall financial sustainability of the Council. However, financial sustainability is not achieved through a performance of single years alone, but from the performance and decisions made over the medium to long term, hence the medium term financial strategy. The additional budget pressures of 3.1 million mean that the Council's operating environment remains challenging, especially in the context that 82% of the budget mitigations found in year were from one-off saving opportunities and interest receipt income all of which are one-off and not recurring. To deliver financial sustainability, the Council must develop effective op options for permanent cost reductions and increases to income. I move the recommendations at 1.2. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, colleagues, comments, please. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, as the Portfolio Health for Children's Services, I'd like to make some comments on the report because, as it has pointed out, there are significant potential pressures on the uh, budget in the future. Um, if you look at uh, pages 18 and 19, and particularly paragraph 3.6.4, um, it talks about the dedicated schools grant. And just to uh, for those listening, uh, the Dead Aethy Schools Grant is the amount of money we get from the government, which basically Rutland County Council passes on to the schools. But a certain amount of that is kept back uh, to provide um, for children with SEND significant educational uh, needs and or disabilities uh, to provide for them. Uh, now, as the report says, there's been a significant overspend of 1.6 million in the 2023-24, uh, uh, but that now has doubled to nearly th uh, well to 2.9 million. The main driver of this is the increase in the what is called the educational health and care plans, the HCPs. Um, these are to help children with uh, education. Uh, Different educational problems, um, and they've risen from uh, 197 in 2019 to 342 now, um, so an 85% increase. Um, the main reasons for the increase in the HCPs is, is perhaps a bit complex, and due to a number of factors. Um, Probably the main one is the Act in 2014, the Children's Act, um, which gave parent, uh, parents rights. Um, but also, it may be 
better identification by parents and schools of the problems of children. Um, it, it, there's also been a significant rise since the pandemic as well, which obviously had an effect. And another factor may be that um, inclusion into the mainstream setting of pupils with uh, specific needs has not filtered down into practice consistently. Now, if nothing is done, um, as the uh, table points out, the, um, uh, the, the uh, on the present trajectory, uh, the graph at 3.65 shows that will the over this high needs block will rise to 14.4 million. Um, and the graph on page 20 um, estimates on this present trajectory, the deficit will be greater, uh, become greater than all the general fund balances. Um, so the council is trying to do something about it. Um, we have what's called a uh, Delivering Better Value Send Improvement Programme, which aims to reduce this deficit. And Rutland County Council is the lead, along with uh, Leicestershire and Leicester County Council. Um, and 3.68 itemises all those uh, things to try and improve it. Uh, I would point out that one of the main efforts to do this is to improve parental confidence. We have specialist, uh, improve, uh, specialist teams to support um, children in need uh, and social support and early intervention. The early years provision is particularly important. The aim is to try and prevent uh, escalation towards specialist needs and maintain children with special needs in the mainstream setting. And I would just point out, it's not just about cost cutting. Uh, it's about providing better care for children with specific needs. And there's good evidence that is better in the long term. Um, but having said that, you know, a number of children will require more specialist care. So the aim is to um, deliver savings of uh, 0.7 million in 24-25 and rising to 3.3 million by 2029-30. So although this program is to try and arrest the deficit, it will not turn it to a balanced budget without change to policy or central government funding. And as Councillor Johnson has pointed out, we need to keep our spending under very tight control and our reserves intact. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I think for the benefit of um, people, the public watching this, it is worth pointing out uh, that we are not in an anomalous position here. Every authority in the country that has responsibility for children's services is finding the pressures on the high needs block and indeed is running with deficits. So we are not unique. Um, we are doing a lot or our officers are doing an awful lot to try and um, control this spend. But with any demand-led service, um, we have to respond to the needs of the children who present to us. They're not widgets. They're small human beings, and in some cases not so small as they get older. Um, but then their needs are paramount, and our services have to, have to respond to their individual needs. But nevertheless, we are working very hard with with our schools i know um, to try and make appropriate suitable beneficial provision whilst at the same time um, recognizing that it is not a bottomless pit there has to be controls over funding so councillor smith thank you for your uh, explanation there um, and it is something we will all be keeping an eye on. Um, Councillor Wise. 
I will be a, um, a lot briefer. Um, the transport overspend, um, 756,000 of that is an overspend on commission transport with the majority relating to significant additional demand for SEN transport. This is directly related to the increase in the education, health and care plans, which often <coughs> include a transport element to have the children attend a mainstream school. We are intending having a look at efficiencies within that system to see if we can reduce that overspend. So we're not just accepting it, but uh, again, looking at how we can more efficiently provide the service. Thank you. Any other cabinet members? Do you wish to sum up Councillor Johnson or are you content? I'm content, Chair. Thank you. Right, so the recommendations which have been proposed and seconded are that we note the outturn position subject to the external audit of the statutory statement of accounts for revenue budget, section three of the report, capital program, section four, and the dedicated school grant, section 3.6.1 to 3.6.5. That we consider the outturn position in regard to financial sustainability over the medium term and impact on the financial strategy and ability to deliver the corporate strategy in 24, 25 and future years. That we approve the recommended reserves movement per section 3.5.5 and that we note the position on the end of year treasury management report that all performance was within all indicators set and in turn the tre treasury management strategy remains valid for the year ahead. All those in favour? That's unanimous, Chair. That's Thank you very much. We move on to item seven, the review of the data incident response policy, the data protection policy, the document retention and record disposal policy, and the Reaper policy. And we are recommended in this to approve the annual review of the four information governance policies, which is the umbrella term for all of those, and that we delegate the authority in future to the Audit and Risk Committee to approve the annual review of these policies. Um, can I have a proposal and a seconder so that we can go into debate? Thank you. Councillor Johnson and Councillor Smith seconding. Um, Councillor Johnson, I believe you're introducing these. Thank you, Chair. I will. Um, uh, as you've said, uh, this report details the review of the Council's information governance policies. Uh, the four policies are the data incident response policy, the data protection policy, the document retention and record disposal policy, and the regulation of investor creativity powers act policy. Um, the reasons for the recommendations are that the current policies were approved by Cabinet in April 2022 and are now due for review. The internal audit of information governance highlighted changes that should be made, and these have been incorporated into the revised versions of the policies, which can be found uh, after this summary. The, re the reviews have been an opportunity to simplify and streamline the policies. Cabinet approved the current versions of the information governance policies on 5th April 2022. An updated review has been carried out of each policy. The main changes that are proposed are highlighted uh, in the paragraphs following paragraph 2.1. Firstly, the data incident response policy, where there are changes in the data breaches and minor grammatical amendments. Secondly, the data protection policy, uh, where the re responsibilities have been made, been made clearer for specific roles within the Council, and the inclusion and description for data protection and impact assessment impact assessments, records of management, processing special categories of personal data, and expansion of lawfulness of processing are now included. Thirdly, the regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, um, where 
changes have been recommended that after recommendations that it should be emphasized that within the policy and reiterated regularly to staff that personal profiles should not be used for council business as it is incumbent on the council to ensure the safety and security of our staff the dangers aligned to using personal social media accounts for business purposes especially those of a covert nature should not be underestimated and all staff should be cognizant of their own personal so online security and of the vulnerabilities attached to using any insecure or personal online platform the policy has been amended to reflect this there is an additional section entitled social media in your personal life and the online covert activity paragraph uh, has incorporated the above recommendations finally the document retention and record disposal policy um, which reflects observations made by the internal information governance audit uh, and also talks about disposal where instructions have been added to ensure that the council undertakes due diligence to ensure that they are an appropriate contractor with practices which comply with data protection legislation and that the appropriate legal documentation is in place uh, i would like to move the recommendations at paragraph 1.2 thank you does anybody have any comments on this no and nor do i um they do need um Having said, I've got no comments, I'm about to comment. Um, they do need uh, updating, clearly, and that's why they're before us. Um, and that's what recommendation one is about. Recommendation two is about delegating this process to the Audit and Risk Committee. And I think it's worthwhile mentioning that the Audit and Risk Committee, as a statutory committee of this authority, is responsible for monitoring the annual reports related to each of these policies. And they are therefore in a better position to consider and reflect on any annual review because they will have seen in detail any um, outcomes uh, from the implementation of these policies. And therefore, I think it is only right and proper that they should have authority to uh, conduct the annual review of the policies in future. So that's why we're being asked that. So, pause for a moment in case anybody's jumping up and down wishing to speak, but clearly not. In which case, um, our recommendations are one, that we approve the Council's for information government, governance policies, and two, delegate the authority to the Audit and Risk Committee to approve the annual reviews of these policies. It's been proposed and seconded. All those in favour, please. That's unanimous, Chair. That's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, item eight. Do we have any items of urgent business? No. And therefore, can I uh, advise everybody that the date of the next meeting is Tuesday, the 9th of July. Thank you very much. And the meeting is closed at 29 minutes past 10. Thank you.